Perfect. Oh, there's more people here. Cool. There are. So can everyone see each other? There may be some more people coming in over the next couple of minutes, so I'll just have them uh, join in. Wendy, more people showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, just to familiarize yourselves with each other, um, there's two of you from the South Florida area and one who's not from Florida at all. So if you can just share some of the things maybe that you've been experiencing um, so we can get comfortable with each other. And then I, my goal for today is to kind of just address your concerns. I created a PowerPoint with different resources um that could be helpful for you and for your kids so i'd be happy to send that to you when this is over and you can use it to whatever way you would like all right so i'm just going to go in order um of course so my name is brooke as you guys know i'm an adhd executive function coach i have heard a lot of concerns from parents and what you know what they're doing with their kids i know that uh, there's differences right now between the public school system and the private school system in the e-learning. Uh, however, I'm sure a lot of the schools will get on to the same page shortly. Now that we just got that new announcement that Florida is extending their absence till April 15th. Um, and who knows at that point what's going to happen. Oh. Yeah. How is it by you, Wendy? Well, we are, um, as of now, can you hear me? It's the same as now, here, but we could hear you. We're through the end of the month, but I suspect that will change. Okay, until the end of the month. Got it. Okay, great. All right, so Carl, I'm going to start with you. Maybe just introduce yourself and um, yeah. say what how old your kids are and what you've been doing with them and maybe share some of your concerns so we can talk collaboratively. Yeah, so I'm Carl and um, I'm working from home. I work for City and um, uh, City Bank. I'm in the IT side doing their security. Um, so working from home for me is not, is not new, right? I'm fortunate to be in technology and um, <clears throat> Uh, my wife's also working from home today, Jennifer, and uh, we've got Fiona and Charlotte, who are uh, 15 and 16, so they're, they're not young. Um, you know, they kind of can entertain themselves. And to be honest, Brooke, I think, you know, we were expecting them to be on spring break um, next week, I think, anyway. Um, so obviously, we were planning to go away. We've, we've cancelled that um, yeah, vacation, obviously, with everything going on, and slowly but surely, uh, you know, the bars, the restaurants, the beaches, the parks are all closing, so um, we haven't had too much time to think about, um, you know, the longer term, right? So, obviously, the next few days, you know, yeah, the kids will be fine, right? Uh, they'll be kind of figuring out, you know, uh, yeah, they're things and, and they're in the band, so I, I definitely heard some trumpet playing going on. So, uh, fortunately, they brought their instruments home, so they're not locked at school. Fortunately or unfortunately? <laughs> well, trumpet playing whilst working from home uh, is interesting, um, <laughs> but it's fine because they can go upstairs. So, I guess for me, it's more the longer term, right? Like, you know, all the information I'm getting. Uh, through work is, you know, uh, we're looking probably through to June before it's going to get a lot worse in the US before it starts to get better. And that inflection point we're estimating is around June, where things will start, hopefully. Uh, but, but obviously, it's a very fluid situation. So really just trying to think, especially with teenagers, um, um, you know, I guess in a way, we're more fortunate because they are more independent. Um, and, and certainly, um, you yeah, know, we have our uh, challenges on uh, waiting for information about the homeschooling, like the online learning, and it's not, it's not been made available yet. Not overly concerned, again, because they were due to go on spring break anyway. Um, so really that longer term, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I think they, they shut the schools until mid-April now. April um, 15th, right. That, that's almost certainly going to get extended, to be sure. honest. 
So sure. it's that sort of thing, right? How do we get into a normal uh, mode of working, especially with the kids, you know, when, they, when they're when home? Uh, yes, they're used to homework, but having the discipline of sitting and doing the lessons, it, I'm assuming the online schooling will work, right? So how do we help them get that discipline and that scheduling of, you know, treating it like, like we do as adults when we work from home, you know? Um, okay. And, and you yeah, have those boundaries because they're, they're not used to that, right? They're used to, I've got homework tonight and then that's it. Where totally. This is going to be a longer term thing. Totally. So you have two high school students and right now there's no work that is being given. Um, the short term, you're feeling okay. You work from home already. So you're kind of used to that. Um, and then next week was supposed to be spring break. So there's still most likely not going to be any schoolwork given, but then after yep. that, how do you do, how do you create structure? How do you create boundaries and how do you enforce that? Yep. Yep. Exactly. So it's new for them. I mean, you know, the maturity of, of them having to be disciplined on their own without a teacher. Exactly. Right? Uh, and, and how do they learn and not get distracted and, and so on and so forth. Great, Carl. So we'll definitely address some of those concerns. Um, and feel free also for the rest of you to share some ideas that you've been using um, as well if you feel like that's been working for you or it could help. Um, Jason, would you like to share any concerns or um, you know feedback or any um, particular thing that you're hoping to get out of this group? I don't know what to get at. I'm just looking for any, you know, hearing what anybody has to say about this. I got the uh, iReady stuff uh, down here in, in Boca. They um, they sent us basically like the assignments that they would be doing anyway. So I had him, you know, read and analyze stories and do all this kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but I also downloaded this Adventure Academy, which is, I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but they had a free trial. So. And how did you hear about it? That was on Facebook. It just okay. randomly popped up. But uh, okay. It looks like it has a lot of the same kind of, you know, read this and give your kind of answers and then level up in the game. So we'll see. Great. So you're here as a listener um, for yep. now and until mm -hmm. maybe something strikes a chord and you feel like, you know, sharing. Great. Sure. Awesome. Wendy. Um, so can you hear me? I'm not sure how communication is at all. We can hear you good enough. That's okay. okay. All right, so basically I have a um, ninth grader and a fifth grader, two boys. One's in private, one's in public. They're both at home. We're in South Carolina. And we, well, I'm a college professor and we are actually on our spring break now, but we're all scrambling, trying to get our classes in order to go online next week. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out um, for James, who is working with Brooke, he doesn't, he can't grasp that he's still in school, <laughs> even though, I mean, because it's from home, so he's having trouble grasping this concept and I just really need help with sort of uh, how do you do this homeschool thing with a do you set what kind of schedule do you set etc sure I'm so from the private sector in South Carolina school is in session at home right now no we're out Private and public schools are out until at least the end of the month, but I suspect that that will change. I'm expecting that they'll extend it into April. Sure. And so <laughs> I know you're out, but it's being presented work, correct? Yes, they have work. Okay. Okay, but there's no online classes at the moment. It's just assignments. Well, I'm not sure how you define online class, but like the fifth grader is using a Google Chromebook and all of his assignments are there. And then James's assignments are um, in Google Classroom. 
Sure. Is that your question? Yeah. So basically, what I'm hearing you say is that the assignments are there, um, and n out of the three of you right now, classes have not been moved online yet. So I believe that that is where things are going currently. Um, in some schools, teachers are just giving assignments like they used to, Wendy, on Google Classroom, um, you know, whatever platforms are there. But what I have heard are most classrooms, especially um, on the university level, the professors will do some sort of online video conferencing like we're doing right now, like a Zoom. Yes. Yes, okay. correct. Great. So for the moment being, while that's not occurring, how do we enforce structure at home? So great question. All right. So that's what I'm going to get into. Everyone can see the screen? Okay, cool. So I'm going to present. <clears throat> the goal of this group is just to support you, answer any questions that you have, um, and what to expect. Obviously, for me to answer your questions, I'm going to present some learning apps. Uh, Jason, thank you for sharing some apps that you have. I know that a lot of people are familiar with iReady, but the Adventure Academy is something that I've never heard of, so I'm definitely going to look into that as well, and I know you said there's a free trial for that. Um, I know that you shared some concerns. I'm going to address those, and I'm going to support you with your you know, concerns and anxiety, but also what you can do for your children who have that anxiety and concern as well. I'm also going to share some sample schedules that have been um, put out there. I have a friend who was a teacher. I was a teacher. Um, and she's actually sharing the schedule that she has with for her kid that she's making up for her kid daily on her Facebook. So after this, I can ask her if people can start joining her Facebook after that. But I love what she does. And there were some just ones out there that you may have seen on social media already. Okay. So how to support your children? Because it's not just you, right, who are saying, oh, how, you know, can I create this structure? I'm sure there's things that are going on in their mind, unknowns, whatever. So obviously talk to them, share age appropriate information. Um, Carl and Wendy, you both have at least one high school student. Jason, your son is younger, right? Okay, so obviously there's um, different things that you can share with them, but share with them the facts to their age level. Reassure them, address the rumors, answer questions, and set a good example for them by taking care of yourself because they're watching everything that you're doing. Also, for you and for them, try to limit exposure to media and social media coverage of the events. So what I shared in a recent Facebook Live, which I'll also be doing consistently throughout the next couple of weeks, is when you wake up, don't check your phone, don't check the media, just take care of yourself and maybe implement that with your children as well. So wake up, meditate, drink a glass of water, um, you know, read, take some deep breaths, do whatever you can do for your mental health before you go onto social media. Do that anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour if you can. Okay. So what about their anxiety and what about yours? So for younger kids, it's best to stay away from the specific information about the virus. Um, a Seattle pediatrician says, so keep the news and radio off when young kids are around. So Jason, this may apply to you. Um, they don't know how to interpret the details. And older children know more. So this is a good time to start the conversation with them by asking what they have heard about this and then go from there. So not necessarily present them with new information, but clarify what they know already. There's some support group on Facebook for you. So one of them that has really good information through my research is the Washington Post groups. It's um, www.facebook.com post parenting. And then I also have a Facebook group. Um, it's actually called the ADHD EdCam 2020 and I post some things there. It's a private group so you can share concerns, what have you. So like I said, I'll be happy to share this 
whole document with you guys afterwards. All right, so structure, you are completely right. We don't know how long they're gonna be off school for them, and whenever they're coming back from a break, um, whether it be a week or a summer, it's called summer brain. So a summer brain is a lack of schedule, routine, um, sleep, and they don't know how to read, they've forgotten how to do school. After winter break, kids come back, they need a week to reset. After daylight savings time, they need a week to reset. A change in the regular routine makes a big difference, so we wanna to try to make their routine and structure as similar to school as possible. So as a former teacher, in the beginning of the school year, we, we created a classroom agreement. As a parent, you can do that as well. You could do a home agreement, a home classroom agreement, and where your child has buy-in. So basically, you ask them for feedback about what the rules and the expectations are while you're at home. So a classroom agreement would be an outline of what's expected and you post it in the room where everyone goes and sees it. So two of you have two kids, Jason, you have one kid, put it in maybe the kitchen, um, the family room, wh whatever. So this way everyone is on the same page and you review this, review this weekly. You know, this is different for you guys. This is different for them. Have a family meeting once a week to just say, okay, how did this week go with the classroom agreement? And what, what can we change? What was missing for next week? And who knows what's going to happen next week with the uh, online learning. But take a look at this agreement, create it with them, maybe put it on a big whiteboard or a poster board or what have you. So this way everyone's on the same page. Make sure to be explicit and upfront with the planning, okay? So the more explicit you are, there, there's clear guidelines and readiness to go back to school if and when they can this year. It also, if you're explicit and upfront, it can create more availability for learning. So on top of that, make the learning fun, okay? So this right now are very broad ideas, but I promise you I'll go to a sample schedule after this. So add some fun into their learning. Let your children teach you a skill that they've been working on. Look for games or other hands-on activities to break up the online learning or worksheets. Have them play and then write a story about what they did. Create a store in the kitchen, do a cooking activity to work on math skills, fractions, things like that. Um, there's a ton of educational companies offering free service during the coronavirus. And um, I am going to share that on the next page with you and documentaries to watch for your kids. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So here's a sample schedule of the person that I um, told you about who's a friend, who's a teacher. She's posting this on her Facebook daily. So this is for today. She has two young kids. Schedule for today, 8.30 to 9.30 classwork. 9.30 to 10.15 would be music. So costume karaoke, that's kind of cool. Make learning fun. Um, Cosmic Kids Yoga on YouTube. So you have some stretch, you have some movement, right? That's indoor learning. For this person's from New York, so they can't really go outside as much because the weather isn't as inducive for that. Um, 11 to 11.30, science. So you can do an oil and water science experiment. But again, it depends on how much you guys are willing to put into it as well. So Carl, you're working from home right now. I'm sure you're pretty busy. How much time do you have to get creative with them? So perhaps instead of um, you have two older girls, maybe you can encourage them to go to YouTube and look for things like that and then say to you, Dad, oh, look, this is what we found. This is what we want to create together. And it could be a bonding experience between the two girls. Um, and then have them share the outcome with you. Then do lunch, recess, whatever the recess is. Dear time, so that's free reading. So if you have specific books at home, dear means drop everything and read. Okay, so free reading time. 
Dan Gutman, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him. He has a read aloud on Facebook. I included his Facebook link on here in a, a couple slides ahead. So he has from uh, half an hour every day at two o'clock a free Facebook read aloud, which is cool. Um, 2.30 to 3.30, online learning, snacks. So online learning can be any like educational apps. So Josh, you had mentioned Adventure Academy. I know there's Khan Academy, there's IXL, there's iReady, um, but there's also a ton more out there. And like I said, I'll get you those resources in a couple of slides. Again, these kids are younger, play with their chalkboards, make a fort using the couch and sheets, showers, dinner. Notice how they still need to do the daily routines outside of work. They have to shower, they have to do dinner, and I'm sure after dinner is get ready for bed. So yeah, you could be a little bit looser on things. You could be a little bit looser on how much app time there is, um, but you want to just kind of structure your mornings and evenings similar to the way that they were when they were at school. So when they're doing schoolwork, they should be waking up approximately around the same time and going to bed around the same time because they, when they go back to school, it's going to be very, very hard to get back into that routine. Weekends, do your weekend thing. This was one for yesterday that she had. So as you can see, a lot of the structure is the same. Again, wake up 8.30, do your classwork. Um, and then the different time blocks. So these time blocks are anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes. You have different subjects. So this person was very creative about what they can do for STEM, which is science, technology, um, math, and for art. But for you guys, the hope is that eventually there will be online classes that you can just fill into those times as well. As you can see, some online learning here is Scholastic, ABC Mouse, and FunBrain. She also did a virtual trip to the Smithsonian. But again, there were showers and dinner at the same time every, time, every day. These are some that I found online as well. So I would say that perhaps these are just like a little bit more the one on the right especially is a little bit more general. So you have subjects and then as a parent um, collaborating with your child, you would have to figure out what will go into those subjects. Here, the daily schedule has the, the subjects um, and the household things. Um, and there are some details about what to do specifically during each time. So like academic time, there's no electronics allowed. So there's Sudoku books, flashcards, study guide, journal. Creative time includes Legos, magnet tiles, drawing, crafting, play music, cook or bake, etc. Here's um, another picture of a celebrity who is doing the board for her kids. And here are some blank schedules that I use with my clients. So if you want to work with your kids to create a daily schedule with them, you can use this framework for them. I'm sure they would have fun putting in the information. You could also, depending on how visual they are, make specific things different colors so they can actually see their amount of free time that they have along with when their academic time is. So I think I think right now, Brooke, right for me, um, <clears throat> there's 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 a lack of lessons and and whatever they need to do, right? So I, I guess for yeah, maybe tomorrow and uh, Friday, it could be a bit more, bit of the structure, like you say, but a bit more relaxed, right? Of like yeah, they they must have been doing something in Spanish and science and whatever that they can go and research with the lack of anything coming from the school um, and, and in that we can include um, 
yeah, actually, I was just thinking, you know, why, why not look at their school schedule that they follow every day, right? And maybe swap, like, Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, so, you know, but there's online stuff maybe, but, you know, there's maybe some things that we can swap out, at least for now, until we get something from the school and online learning. Absolutely. Another thought is have them watch a Spanish movie on Netflix and, um, you know, put subtitles on there, something like that. Um, Khan Academy may have some Spanish stuff on there, and that's a free source as well. What's the Khan Academy? K H A N Academy. There's every subject, everything on there. Videos. But yeah, Carl, I like that. I mean, if you want to substitute Spanish with free time for now, fine. But the biggest thing is. There should be structure and they should collaborate with you on it and it should be reviewed at the end of the week. Um, and if you want for young kids, I know your kids aren't young, but you know, you can reward them with money for every day that they follow the schedule. You know, for the younger kids, maybe a dollar a day will make them happy for the older kids. I don't know if they're working towards a car gas money, whatever, but think about maybe bigger bills or um, earning towards a certain present. Well, part of it, we got dogs as well, right? So part of the day can be, you can have your free time, but you can walk the dogs for 15 minutes, you know, something like that as well. Exactly. But, you know, you could differentiate the walking, the dogs could be chore time. And then the free, time, I mean. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the free yeah. time could be a combination of different things. So they could jump on the trampoline that you have in your backyard. They could um, watch, the the, they could go to the pool. They could um, clean the pool. Oh, clean the pool. pool. That is not <laughs> free time. That's chore time. Don't blend the two. Your girls will probably want to do all of that, but for the people watching here, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> no, no, they won't. Uh, but yeah, I, I like how you're starting to think, Carl. So your your brain is thinking about different ideas and different subjects that they could put into it. I love going back to their schedule and kind of just filling in their schedule with different ideas for those subjects. It's great. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is rather than us doing this is maybe printing these out and, and kind of give them the nudge of use your school schedule because that's what you're used to and come back with what you think and then give them some ideas of, you know, a chore can be walking the dogs, but it also just gets them outside a little bit, you know. Um, they, they also, like I say, they also have their band, so they, they, they enjoy doing their music. But equally, that's part of their school day. You know, they have band is one of their one of their lessons, right? So, no, I think because awesome. um, that way, then, <clears throat> especially with Charlotte, right, is the buy-in of it's not me telling them. I mean, my kids are older, so it's like, hey, you go and figure this out, and come and you know, give me what you think is right. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Yeah, for sure. For sure, it's their buy-in. Um, you're giving them the schedule and they have to fill in the blanks and then you can discuss it, like not say, oh, this isn't right. This is, what What made you think about this idea? I really like X, Y, and Z, but what made you think about this for art? <laughs> what made you think about painting the walls for art? <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, because uh, they both like their uh, drawing as well. So, they, and they, they don't do that at school. So, okay. Yeah, and if they, if you have chalk, maybe they can do art on the sidewalk or on um, the walkway, whatever. Okay, so here are a ton of websites. Commonsensemedia.org. Fantastic. So I, I did some digging, and um, they have tons of movies, books, app, and games that are appropriate for kids, and it's categorized by age. So there's three and down, six to three, and then there's 13 and up. So um, you just have to click on the, the age group and then go from there. 
So that's on here. There's also documentaries to watch with kids. This article came out in 2017 of the summer, but they're all educationally rated. So for Carl, perhaps, you know, um, instead of Spanish, they can watch an educational documentary for one block of time. Or, you know, get creative instead of STEM. Um, like I said before, common educational sites, Khan Academy, IXL, I'll add to that list, but these sites um, should be also within the commonsensemedia.org. And like I mentioned before, there's a Dan Gutman read aloud at two o'clock. So you can click on his Facebook group and um, watch his Facebook Live for the read aloud. So a lot of information I got from these three sites. So if you want to take a look at the educational resources, um, you know, what to do at home, sample schedules, information, here are three sites that I found helpful. And for this week, I'm going to be doing some other things. So you came to the parent one today for anyone who's in my adult ADHD um, support group right now or their client. They have today at five. Um, Thursday, managing time and studies, those are for college kids. So if you know of anyone who has a college kid and wants to jump online, they can come to my group Thursday at three. They just have to email me for the Zoom link. And then just in general, as an adult, you're welcome back. It's not parent specific, it's just adult specific. Uh, Thursday at four, just supporting adults during this time, talking about like what you can control, what you can't control, um, and you know, shifting your focus, discussing myths versus facts about coronavirus and all of that. Like I said, there's gonna be continuous Facebook Lives. I am gonna bring in a doctor next week um, to talk about Miss First Facts on coronavirus. And from this group, I'm also creating a daily evening virtual group with myself and my coaches who work for me to for students. So it's gonna be age specific. You know, all high school kids will go with each other, all middle school kids will go with each other, and they could meet online at 6 p.m. with the coaches and talk about what they did educationally for the day, what their plan is for tomorrow, and we can talk about study skills, schedules, what have you. So it's an academic educational group to really organize and manage their time because I know we're not teachers. Well, you are, Wendy, but um, you know this is different for you. So to help them organize and keep them on top of things, I'm creating this group. So depending on people who are interested, I will create the group as soon as possible. Any questions, concerns? Wendy. How would we go about signing our children up for that virtual? Great question. So all you would have to do is just email me and um, I will give you all the information about it. It's much less than, you know, the one-on-one -on -one coaching prices because it's different. It's in a group. It's more. What? Yeah. So just email me at brooke at coachingwithbrooke.com. Tell me when you're interested. And what we're going to be doing is um, there's a, a rate for the week. And they can jump in or out as many, as many days as possible. It's a much, much lower rate. And um, it's an hour a class. Perfect. Yeah. And, um, this, uh, well, this is not really with regard to my children, but to my students, those children. Um, would this be something on Thursday that I could suggest they attend, or you only want your clients in this Thursday? No, oh, anyone, anyone can attend. So for your uh, college students, absolutely anyone can attend. All they need to do, again, is email me at brooke at coachingwithbrooke.com, and they could jump on the Zoom. I'll give them the link, and okay. I'm going to talk about, you know, how to do online classes and how to go back home many of them after gaining independence in college 
So how do they adjust with their parents, the rules, uh, all of that? So there's a difference. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Wendy. Good, good, I'm glad, I'm glad. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna post this video um, for everyone on Facebook, if that's okay with you guys. And then I'm gonna, um, I can share this link with you. I have two of your emails. Jason, I think I have your email, but why don't you just email me and uh, from there I'll just send you the link. Any questions? Sorry. Do you think this would be something that we should do again next week after you get some traction with your kids? <clears throat> no, certainly for me, Brooke, yeah. And, uh, yeah I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it's like giving me some ideas that I've shared, obviously, right? So. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And I mean, even ideas for spring break, because now that you can't leave the house, what are you going to do on spring break? That's interesting. Maybe yeah, be the beaches are closed and everything. It's crazy. Yeah, in Boca, at least. Yeah, we um, <laughs> we we haven't had time to think about it, right? So uh, we we've cancelled everything. I I you know I still have next week off from work, technically, but obviously everything uh, yeah works fine, right? They'll they're very flexible, um, but we we just don't have time to even think about it. We were I'll be honest, we were thinking of. Um, uh, going down to the Keys, just driving because we were off to Colorado and, and getting on a boat. Social distancing on a, on a fishing boat seemed to be a good idea, but uh, I don't know. You know, we, we, we just don't have time to think about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's everyone has different ideas, different opinions. Um, and, you know, we'll, whatever you think is right will come to you at that time. Um, but it's, it's a tough time and we gotta be creative and support one another. So um, I will share out a new group next week for all of us to come back. If you wanna invite your friends, you can too. They don't just have to be clients. And I'll see the progress of how it's going and you can see what worked, what didn't work and then we can kinda of go from there and brainstorm. Yeah, I think as well in the next, in the coming days, this time next week, it, the situation will be worse, right? More things closed, right? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's something that, yeah, we just all need to accept, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, especially in the northern areas, New York, everything is already closed, right? So... And, you know, their kids with the weather may not be able to have as many opportunities. So you're right. You just got to be very creative about what's to happen. But there are, there are things going out on a daily basis with ideas. Um, I'll be posting some stuff on my Facebook page, Coaching with Brooke. Um, and, yeah, I mean, anything that you guys like that you come up with, Please feel free to share on my Facebook page and then I'll forward it out to whoever needs it or email me some things that have worked for you and I'll email it out to other parents. Great. Well, Carl, Jason, Wendy, thanks for showing up, taking some time out of your day and let me know what works for you. We will. I will. Thanks so much. Awesome. Yeah, and when this is all done, we got to talk about, you know, doing something with the little guy. So perfect. Setting perfect. up a meeting of some sort. Great. All right. Thanks, Jason. Bye, all guys. Right. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.